Welcome back to our lecture series, Mac 1220, Calculus 2 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I am your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to start Chapter 10 in James Stewart's Calculus textbook uh, and talk a little bit about parametric equations, or that is functions, curves that we can define from using these parametric equations. Now, to begin our discussion here, we have to kind of first talk about what does one mean actually by a function? Uh, we've seen many examples of functions where, you know, we take our x and we our y-axis and we, we draw a picture. We're like, oh, uh, whoops, that's a line. That's a function because it passes the vertical line test. Uh, a parabola is a function, passes the vertical line test. A circle is not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test and things like that. The problem with that discussion is those that's an argument that shows that y is a function of x or y is not a function of x. There's other options, of course. I mean, if we have a concave right parabola, like so, although this graph does fail the vertical line test, it does pass the horizontal line test. And so while y is not a function of x, we can express x as a function of y. That's perfectly acceptable. And so again, our perspective of function has to kind of evolve as we go forward here. So imagine we have a little ant that walks through a pool of red ink. And then as the ant walks around the floor, it has a, you know, it leaves behind a little red trail that represents the path of our bug. And, you know, one could ask, is this path a function? Maybe our little ant leaves this mess on our homework here. Is this path a function? Well, you know, the floor represents a flat plane, and so we could actually think of, you know, the, 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 the path of this ant, as you can see drawn on the screen here, as a curve in the xy plane. Um, and so, is, is, is this path a function, right? Well, it certainly doesn't pass the vertical line test. It doesn't pass the horizontal line test. And I'm not sure you can find any diagonal line that would intersect this graph in only one location. So with the traditional sense of these line tests, it's not gonna be a function. But the, the graph is a function if we think of it as a function, a function of time function of time, let's say t here, because at any at any moment in the journey, we could determine where our ant was located. So like say when t equals five seconds or whatever, uh, the ant was here. And then later on, when t equals say like 10 seconds, the ant was here. And then at the beginning of the journey, when t equals zero seconds, the ant was right here. And so we can say that the ant's current location is a function of time, and hence the path traversed, transversed by the ant is a function of time. But when we start talking about that, this point in, this, in space here, it has two coordinates, x and y. So we could describe x as a function of time. So we might say something like x equals f of t. And we might also describe the y coordinate as a function of time. We'll say g of t right here. And so this, this right here is what we refer to as the parametric equations. The parametric equations for x and y. And we refer to this, this letter t, this variable t, as its parameter. And we often use the letter t because we like in the example of this of this ant here, we can think of this parameter as a variable of time. And so the location, you know, the location of the ant, we could think of as a parametric function, a function for which the x and y coordinate are determined by some third independent parameter, which in this case we call t. And so the location of any point in space, we can describe as f of t and g of t like so. And so this gives us a parametric parametric function and then the graph of a parametric function we refer to as a parametric curve. Now a parametric curve has a lot more liberty 
than your traditional graphs that we've seen in like a calculus or an algebra class or trigonometry class because this parametric curve uh, does allow uh, the graph to violate the vertical line test and it stills a function. It can violate the horizontal line test. Uh, and so we get, we get a lot more liberty in this type of situation. Now, I want to kind of mention that this idea of parametric curves and parametric functions really is a precursor to multivariable uh, type calculus questions because what we're doing right now is we're just considering a function uh, some function f here, which would take in one real variable and output two real variables. And so this really is a precursor to higher uh, multivariate settings here. But we'll keep it pretty basic for right now. So let's consider an example of a parametric function. And as it's very likely we haven't seen something like this before, uh, let's pretend like we have no idea what this would look like. Uh, let's sketch and identify the curved uh, function, there's a little typo there, identify the curve defined by the parametric function. X will satisfy the equation X equals T squared minus 2T, and Y will satisfy the relationship Y equals T plus 1. Now, we can graph this thing like we do any other graph, right? I mean, when we first learned how to graph functions, it really just comes down to plain connect the dots. We pick certain X values and find their corresponding Y coordinates, and if we get enough dots, we can start connecting the or we can connect the dots, just like we learned in kindergarten, which apparently is college level mathematics here. So let's start with some easy things. If you take your parameter t to be zero, we'll plug it into this equation above, you'll get x equals zero squared minus two times zero, which will of course be zero, which you can see right here. And if we do that in the other one, y equals zero plus one, you're gonna get one, which gives us this coordinate right here. So the way we want to interpret this line of our table is that when t equals 0, x will equal 0 and y will equal 0. And so we get this point right here. x equals 0 means we're on the y-axis and y equals 0 means we're one above the x-axis. Well, what if we try t equals 1? We'll take this right here. You plug 1 into the x equation, plug 1 into the y equation. If you plug 1 into the x equation, you'll get... 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. If you plug 1 into the y equation, you'll get 1 plus 1, which is 2. And that then produces this point right here on the, in the plane. x is negative 1, y is 2. Try this again when t equals 2. Well, plug t equals 2 into the first equation. You will get 4 minus 4, which is 0. And then if you plug t oops, into this one right here, if you plug t equals 2 into that equation, you get y equals 2 plus 1, which is 3, right? In which case, we get this point right here. Isn't that an adorable point? Uh, 0, 3. We can keep on doing this right. If you plug in t equals 3 into the first equation for x, you'll get 9 minus 6, which is 3. Plug it into the y equation, you'll get 3 plus 1, which is 4. In which case, we get this point right here, uh, 3, 4. Try it for x equals 4, or t equals 4, excuse me. Plug it in here, you'll get 16 minus 4, is that right? No, 16 minus 8, which is 8. And then plug it in for y, you're going to get 4 plus 1. I think we can all handle that last one there. In which case, we then get the point, there you are, 8 comma 5. Uh, we don't have to be so optimistic right now. We could be negative for a little bit. Uh, let's take t to be negative 1. You plug it into here. Uh, well... That works out just fine. You're going to get 1 plus 2, which is 3 for our x coordinate. And plug it here, negative 1 plus 1. We still can handle adding 1 to a number. We're going to get 0, which produces this number right here. This point, I should say, 3 and 0. And then just as one last example, take t equals to negative 2. Plug it into x. You're going to get 4 plus 4, which is 8. And plug it in here. You're going to get negative 1, thus producing this point right here. So we've now collected a good number of points. If we try to play connect the dots, going like this, this is extreme connect the dots because we have negative dots as well. We get something like that. 
And, you know, if we kind of blur our vision a little bit, it's like, wow, it looks like a parabola. Now, admittedly, when I blur my vision, I see two parabolas, and so that's sort of a problem maybe I should go talk to my optometrist about. But if we connect these dots together in a more smooth fashion, and go like a smooth criminal here, we actually do get something that kind of looks like a parabola. Now, if we were to complete this graph with more refined points as we had a lot more points or if you just use a computer to assist us we'll get a graph that looks something like the following uh we actually do get a parabolic shape like this and in fact this right here this this yellow parabola is the graph of the function x equals y squared minus 4y plus 3. now how does one accomplish that well notice before we had y equals t plus 1 right if we were to solve for t, this tells us that t equals y minus 1. We also know that x equals t squared minus 2t. If we make this substitution in here, uh, we end up with y minus 1 squared minus 2 times y minus 1. Uh, simplifying here, right, we're going to foil out the y minus 1 squared. That gives y squared minus 2y plus 1 distribute the negative 2 here, we get negative 2y plus 2, and combine like terms, our favorite part, y squared minus 4y plus 3, uh, and there you go, that's where we get this, this thing right here. We've found a parameterization of this curve right here, and so I want to make a comment about that. x equals t squared minus 2t, that's what it was, and then y equals t plus 1. So when we go from the equation to this, this is what we refer to as a parameterization. Oh no, I'm not going to be able to fit it. Parameterization. A parameterization of the equation. Uh, of, of this locus right here and that can be very that can be a very useful thing sometimes it's helpful to parameterize a curve especially if the curve isn't sort of a traditional uh, y equals f of x type of situation and going the other way around if you have a parameterization you go back to the original uh, the original equation for which the parameter t is now absent we often refer to this as eliminating eliminating the parameter can we, can we talk about a parametric curve without actually the parameter whatsoever? And so it can be useful and difficult uh, to be able to go back and forth between uh, this the, the, the parameterization and the removed parameter, like in this situation.